Christian integrity, the incarnating of Christ's life, is the Father's penultimate aim in redemptive history. Let me repeat that and then explain it for younger minds. Christian integrity, the incarnating of Christ's life, is the Father's penultimate aim in redemptive history. Let's start with the $5 word, penultimate. Penultimate describes a secondary motivation. It's not that which is ultimate. It is that which is next to being ultimate. And here's what I'm saying. Christian integrity, the incarnating of Christ in our lives, is the Father's penultimate aim in redemptive history. Which means this, it's a big deal. It's not ultimate, but it's penultimate. And if you can't be ultimate, you should take penultimate. Now where do I get this? Romans 8. Drink this in, Christian. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom God foreknew, God also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be firstborn among many brothers. And those whom God predestined, God also called. Those whom God called, he also justified. Those whom God justified, he also glorified. Did you see that the pin ultimate aim of the Father is to conform a people to the image of his Son? That's the pin ultimate aim. He foreknows and predestines to be conformed to Christ likeness for a purpose so that the ultimate aim can be accomplished. And the ultimate aim of the Father in all of human redemptive history is this the Father desires one thing above all others, and it's not your salvation. The Father desires one thing above all others. And it's not Satan or the wicked's damnation. The Father desires one thing above all others. And this so resonates with any loving father in this room. Because what does every loving father desire ultimately, if not the exaltation of their beloved child? The father wants one thing when it's all said and done. The father wants one thing for Christ to be seen as firstborn, preeminent, supreme, most beautiful, most glorious, most loved, most honored. The Father wants that one thing for His Son. And how does He get it for His Son? How does He grab the brass ring? He makes a people like His Son. Who then for all eternity worship? The Son. Christian integrity, the incarnating of Christ's life. It's a big deal. So Christian, your steadfast adherence to the law of Christ matters. Why? Why, preachers, is such a big deal that I watch holy things and I listen to holy music so that Christ can be firstborn among many brethren. Preacher, why, why are you harping on the soundness of my faith? Why does my faith matter? So that Christ can be firstborn among many brethren. Why is your quality of being whole, why, why is this idea of you being undivided in your devotion to the Lord, why is that such a big deal that I would wax elephant on? So that Christ would be firstborn among many brethren. Your fleeing immorality matters. So that Christ is firstborn among many brethren. Your life being void of hypocrisy matters. So that Christ is firstborn among many brothers. Your life being characterized by honesty matters so that Christ is firstborn among many brothers. Your integrity matters so that Christ is firstborn among many brothers. Amen. 